Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the Word of God, and because of the testimony which they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed also. In our last podcast on spiritual warfare, we were looking at the upper level, the level between God and Satan, the battle that's fought daily. Although it's not seen with the human eye, it is certainly felt. We talked about the history of Satan's attack on the children of God. How that as soon as he learned in Genesis 2 about the first prophecy of God, that it would be a human being who would crush his head, that he went after the seed, as is pictured in Revelation 12, where the seven-headed dragon is waiting for the holy woman to give birth to devour her seed. And we see a river of blood from Genesis all the way up till the cross of Christ as Satan tries to destroy the seed but he's unsuccessful and when God finally allows him to attack Jesus what happens is something beyond anyone's comprehension and that is that the Lord Jesus Christ's death would be placed and implemented for all of the sins of all mankind. As in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6-12 through 12 says, that if the rulers of this world, if Satan would have only known what he was doing when he finally was allowed to get to the true seed, Jesus, he wouldn't have done it. I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for him. And that's talking about the cross. Well, once the cross took place, then Satan's agenda shifted. You see, now in the spiritual warfare, we're at the second level. It's the level between Christ's church and the world system that is ruled by our enemy, who is Satan. The church would always be under attack. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16 and 18. And as Satan realizes that he cannot destroy the seed, he decides to try to destroy the church. And God allowed it. Remember, God only allows Satan to attack us when it will accomplish a goal for good. Because we see in Acts chapter 8 and verse 1, And at that time there was a great persecution that against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So you see now, in this great persecution against the church, as Satan incites the passions of men against God's people, God uses it to spread the gospel and the good news of what God has done, is doing, and will do for us through Jesus throughout the entire known world at that time. And in our scripture that we began with, we see that, yes, in war, in any battle, there are those who die. But the difference with us is that we go to be with Jesus, which is far better. But in heaven, the question still persists by the souls of those who have been martyred for the faith. Why? And how long are you going to let it go on? And God says, it's going to go on for a little longer. 
because he has a purpose to accomplish with it. And so they're given white robes and they're told to wait as the persecution continues on earth. But when that persecution is ended, when Satan forces, the world forces that he used against the church have been defeated by God, Rome and all of its power cannot stop the church with its persecution under the direction of Satan himself. And so now we come to the end of Revelation to find out what happens to the devil. And in Revelation 20, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. Notice what it says there. Deceive the nations no more. No longer could there be a world force like Rome that controlled all the nations of the world to go after Christianity and persecute them. Now that doesn't mean that there is not persecution today. But it's just that it's not in the whole world. But then again, Satan will be loosed for a season. Are we in that season now? I don't know. As we see that Christians are being persecuted all over the world, maybe it could be. I mean, ISIS, their ultimatum to Christians living in Mosul, the uh, ultimatum was pay taxes leave the country or convert to Islam or die. Their goal is a religious cleansing of anything that has to do with Christianity. Hundreds are fleeing there to be stopped at checkpoints and to have their possessions taken away from them as they're going into Iraq. And then again in Syria, in Egypt, and not to mention what's going on in Sudan and Kosovo. Extremists are attacking Christians. And then, of course, the worst place in all the world for Christian persecution, North Korea. They say, at a conservative estimate, 30,000 Christians are in concentration camps in North Korea. All they have to be found with is a piece of paper with a scripture written on it, and that's enough to sentence them. All of this, why? Because Satan hates the church. And the church is being persecuted all over the world. And and they need our prayers. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters who are going through this terrible persecution. In fact, let's pray right now. Almighty God and Father who is in heaven, we come to you through the name of Jesus Christ, our great and merciful high priest. As you know, Heavenly Father, your people are suffering. As you know, Heavenly Father, they're being persecuted. And we know that, Father, this persecution will come to everyone who's faithful in Christ Jesus. And and we know, Father, the words of Jesus when he said, Don't think it's strange. If they hated me, they'll hate you also. And so, Father, we pray now, please be with these Christians and and bless them and help them to escape and to be safe. And if they die for your cause, we give praise to your holy name and glorify you because we know their death will bring great glory and honor to them and to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Satan couldn't get the seed, so now he's after all of the church. But thanks be to God that the power of our Lord Jesus Christ saves us from our sins and assures us that even if the worst happened, it couldn't be compared, the Apostle Paul said, to the glory that shall be revealed to us. If this podcast 
has been of interest to you and you want to hear more, go to johndkimbrough.com. Thank you.